It's 1968, the year of the living dead. Poet Allen Ginsberg and his friends perform an act of exorcism on the grave of Senator Joseph McCarthy, the originator of the witch hunt in the 50s. After the death of Ernesto Che Guevara, the name Che becomes the symbol of protest. He's adored by leftist students and Hollywood producers alike. Members of the family, a cult founded by Charles Manson, travel across the west coast of the United States, waiting for the end of the world. Soviet scientists from the Institute of Radio Engineering and Electronics carry out experiments on Nanel Kulagina, a woman who claims to have supernatural abilities. Meanwhile, a young director named George Romero starts shooting his first movie. George Romero has been making movies since he was 14 years old. He studied art at the Carnegie Institute of Technology in Pittsburgh. Romero's career in cinema began in Pittsburgh on the set of North by Northwest. Working with Hitchcock laid the foundation for Romero's own artistic style. Later, he continued developing his style while producing commercials with his own company in Pittsburgh. This box has never been opened. And the Calgon. You'll thrill as Calgon dissolves the dirty leftover detergent film. It's working. The gray is gone. The fibers are clean. Let's get out of here. I think I'm in love with you. George dreams of the big screen, along with his friends, screenwriters John Russo and Rudy Ricci. So far, the friends have been able to raise a few thousand dollars and agree that they will shoot a movie about the monsters. Inspired by his friend's advice and Richard Matheson's vampire novel, I Am Legend, Romero finishes the first draft of the script in four days. The movie's working title is Night of the Flesh Eaters. Romero's inspiration does not come only from comic books and old horror movies. He's following all the current events. Actors are chosen from Pittsburgh theaters. African-American actor Dwayne Jones gets the lead part and immediately rewrites his character's lines. It's even easier to find people to play zombies. They used worn secondhand clothes to make zombie costumes and wax from a funeral house for zombie makeup. Actors scare many Pittsburgh residents. During pre-production, Romero manages to find more investors and double the budget. The movie calls for burning a house, but this scene alone will cost all the money they have. The problem is solved when they find a house in Pennsylvania scheduled to be torn down. Filming in the house only costs $300 a month. The location and the house itself already look like they belong in a horror movie. Despite bad weather, the shooting begins. The set is in complete chaos. Romero himself works as a director, a cameraman, a video editor, and even stars in a minor role. The crew has to cut corners on everything. They don't even have enough money for color film. They use chocolate syrup instead of blood. Real policemen and their dogs work on the movie for free. The shooting is done in just 30 production days and mostly shot on weekends. It takes the crew seven months to complete their work. New investors jump aboard and the budget grows. Investors have some questions. Who are the flesh eaters? Why is their behavior so odd? Romero comes up with a space legend and the first rules of zombie behavior. They finish up the work on the video in the spring of 1968 and start working on the sound. 
They get creative with the materials on hand. For instance, they crack a melon to imitate the sound of a head breaking against concrete. Romero is constantly stressed, but then, finally, the film is complete. Along with the investors, Romero starts searching for a distribution company. On his way to New York, he listens to the radio and learns that civil rights activist Martin Luther King Jr. was killed. The movie, starring an African-American as the protagonist, suddenly takes on political implications. No one wants to buy the movie. In the end, they strike a deal with a small distribution company, Continental Pictures. Before the release, they come up with a different name for the movie. The first screening takes place in Pittsburgh. The future of the movie depends on how well it goes. In the fall, new movie rating guidelines are introduced in the US. Now, teenagers are not allowed to watch the film. The new guidelines go into effect on November 1st. Romero decides to release his movie a month earlier to cheat the system. The crew comes up with creative advertising tools. They ask the audience to bring paper bags and promise to pay $50,000 to anyone getting a heart attack during the screening. The opening night is set for October 2nd. In the end, it receives a standing ovation. I never thought of them as zombies. To me, they were dead neighbors. I like to use horror as allegory. All of my films are just sort of snapshots of the time they were made. We may not enjoy living together, but dying together won't solve anything. Nineteen sixty-eight is the year when fear serves as inspiration. The first Soviet horror movie, V, is out on the big screens. Over thirty-two million people come out to watch the film adaptation of a novel by the popular Russian author Nikolai Gogol. American director Franklin Schaffner scares the audience with an alternate future in which Earth turns into a planet of the apes with enslaved humans serving apes. Italian director Michelangelo Antonioni starts shooting his movie Zabreski Point in the desert. It's a film about the fears and journeys of the youth in the 60s. In the next few years, Night of the Living Dead will earn $30 million at the box office and become a cult movie. George Romero will make five more zombie movies. In 1999, the film will be admitted to the Library of Congress. Romero's low-budget film will open the gate for the zombie genre, not only in movies, but also in music videos, commercials, popular science books, and will create a multi-billion dollar industry of merchandise for fans of the zombie aesthetic. 